Folks, I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm doing a reading on a pretty well-known figure in the internet entertainment atmosphere. This is on Dr. Disrespect and what he has been accused of doing. Texting, or I should say messaging a minor on Twitch's platform a few years back. I've got a couple of questions about who Dr. Disrespect is. From this point on, on, I'm going to be calling him Herschel because that's his real government first name, okay? Herschel. Just so that there is no confusion. I am using the Seventh Sphere Letter Mon for a blunt, plain spoken reading. In order to answer my first question, I am using a nine card spread. This is a three by three type of spread where it, it's also known as a portrait spread. It kind of reveals the past, present, and future of a situation, what's going on on the surface, what people are consciously aware of as well as well people, what people are not consciously aware of, and some other things. My first question is who is Herschel? when he, who is he really, when it's just him behind closed doors with him and his family, who is he really? Okay, so I've got my nine card spread laid out. The central theme for this particular spread is Anchor. Who is he really behind closed doors? He's a pretty stable, unmoving person, for better or for worse, okay? Now, I don't know that that's always going to be a great thing that could indicate stubbornness. There's some earth energy in that kind of card, even though it's associated with water. I noted that he is a Pisces. That's someone who, interestingly enough, has issues with boundaries. But this implies that, in fact, he does not have issues with boundaries, that he's quite stable and consistent, and he might be the anchor for this particular family in many ways. He might be the anchor of his particular situation. People may see him as quite the pillar of the community, locally even. Off, off, offline, people may look up to him. And of course, people online do too. I know that much, um, in spite of what he's been accused of doing, okay? I don't, I want to say accused because I don't know how much evidence is out there right now. It's just something that I see popping up everywhere, and I wanted to just kind of get a look at the situation, okay? So I'm reading corner cards at this point. Corner cards are what exactly what they are. These are on the top row. This is Sun and Rider. He's going to get pretty consistent news about success, about being in the limelight. And I see that happening well into the future, but there's a caveat to all of this. Because what he doesn't see and what he may not even feel that clearly is that his success is pretty much going to consistently isolate him. The more successful that he becomes, the greater the risk for isolation becomes. He's just not going to be able to relate to people on the same level, and that includes the person that he's currently married to. There's the risk, and I'm just kind of getting this, there's the risk that he's just, that they're just going to kind of grow apart in the future and that they're going to go their separate ways. That may not happen, okay? Take that as it resonates. But those are his corner cards. Those are kind of what help kind of establish more of a context around the situation. Now, I'm looking at the past and kind of what built him into who he really is right now behind closed doors. Um, in the um, past vertical column. I've got sun, I've got ring, and I've got clouds. So success, very consistent sec success, a constant cycle. It, I guess spirits are messing around with me and calling this a penis ring. Okay, messing around with me. Excuse me. <laughs> so success, a commitment, 
a really, really tight, unmoving cycle, I should say. But he doesn't see exactly clearly why he's successful. He feels like, I wonder if he doesn't feel like, this may not be completely accurate, but he feels like he was just playing a character and people liked it. I don't know whether he can specifically pinpoint why people or even children are so attracted to his doctor disrespect persona. Um, he just knows that it's successful. He doesn't question it, and that's all there is to it. Now, here's the kind of interesting thing. Clouds not being able to see a situation clearly lands on the house of the snake, which tells me that there are things that are able to hide when he's not able to see clearly. And that includes what he wants to hide, not just what others may want to hide from him for whatever reason. He has reasons for hiding stuff, so do the people around him. Nobody's seeing clearly and it's causing harm to people quite possibly, okay? But there was already that foundation laid by the time that we got to this particular point. Doesn't see clearly why he's successful and that might be like uh, the child card does not partic appear in this particular spread, but I know that he appeals to like the younger crowd, like to the 12 year old crowd. Once you get up to like your mid teens, I can see how people can start to outgrow based on what I've heard. Okay. I don't watch his stuff. I've seen like 30 second clips years ago and it wasn't my thing. Okay. But, um, Success is going to become a constant theme in his particular life. I can see going into the future. It's going to stick around. This is a diagonal that points going into the future, points forward going into the future. And this is where I got the understanding that success will isolate him and that it's going to be very difficult to move out of that because people know what he looks like. He stands out whether he wants to or not. I know that he's tall. That's part of it. Whether he likes it or not, the culture that he's in, um, attention, but like tall people attract attention, right? So no matter what he does, even if he leaves the internet right now, goodbye, forever, he's still going to be the kind of person to just attract attention. It's something that he can't get away from. People are just going to look at him. And at the same time, it isolates him. Everyone wants to look at him. Not everyone really wants to connect with him. And we'll get more into that in just a bit, okay? In his present situation, his present vertical column, he's got clover. He's got anchor, risk, reward, taking things kind of lightheartedly. That's something that he's always done. And in fact, it's something that he's done since he was a kid. Again, the child card does not appear in this particular spread, but with the ship, that lands on the house of the coffin. The coffin kind of tells me what he's repressing, what comes from in a very deep place, what is also potentially ending in the future um, if things happen in those particular circumstances. Not always, because sometimes something ends and then is reborn as something new that's worse, okay? So this is someone who has gone, who has done stuff like this now for a long time. It makes sense. He's been this kind of successful for, successful for a long time. He knows what to do, but he doesn't know exactly why it works. It's been this way for a long time. He just kind of like takes it lightheartedly. Here today, gone tomorrow kind of energy here with that rider very speedy stuff, not just about news, notifications of continued success, but it's also like there's that risk reward. Once again, the reward is that he's successful. The risk is that he continues to isolate himself more and more and become less of a connected person and more of a symbol. And um, he's still a person. In spite of his flaws, he's still a person and connection is needed when you're a person, right? With the ship, 
You've got the anchor. That's interesting. You've got something that normally moves around, but isn't right now. This is stagnancy. He's just kind of gotten used to having luck no matter what happens. And he's stagnant in this kind of energy. At this point, he just kind of expects things to be taken care of no matter what he has done in the past. He expects people to sweep after him to clean up after his mess because that's how it's happened before. Why wouldn't it happen that way again? Twitch was willing to keep his secret in the past. Why wouldn't other people be willing to keep other things secret for him into the future is what he's learned. That's his present attitude right now. That's where he is right now. Now in the future, he's got Ryder. He's got Stork. Repeating cycles, slightly different each time. Possibly something to do with travel. Again, we've got this particular ship. There might be something to do with that. Possibly not. But then we've got Tower. Slowly, gradually, he's going to pass through situations, pass through cycles that push him further into isolation. And I don't know that he's going to consciously do this at all. Now keep in mind that he can start to make different choices and this potential future that you see that I just read out, that might not happen at all. He might take a different tra tra trajectory and do something completely different and this particular outcome would shift and that's fine. I would hope that he would make Choices that lead towards his, toward his best and his highest good. I don't know that he will, because this is the particular outcome that's going to happen if he makes no changes between the present situation and the future. If he makes no, cho no, no changes, he's going to continue to go just kind of like pass through cycles without thinking too hard about anything. Nothing changes. He doesn't grow. He doesn't choose to see things for what they are. He doesn't want to. And in fact, he might even continue to be rewarded well into the future for not seeing things as they are. And then he just becomes isolated. He won't be able to get away from this. Isolated from the public. Isolated from social circles too. This landed, this landed, yes, this landed on the house of the bouquet. This is someone who doesn't connect even with the people that he should connect with. That includes his family. If he continues to do this, this won't, if he continues to not change his habits, his daily habits even, and remember that he's the anchor, that this is what the universe chose to use to symbolize him. Who is he really behind the scenes? This is someone who hates change. He hates change. Now, I was reading the vertical column. That was past, present, and future. Where he might be in the future is where we kind of ended. I want to take a look at what's going on on a conscious level. This is what he's consciously thinking, genuinely. What can I do to become more successful? What do I have to risk? What do I have to gamble in order to keep growing, to keep exploring, to keep adventuring, to keep bringing in news that I want to hear, okay? I want to be successful. I want successful news. What do I need to gamble in order to keep that, those awesome notifications coming about new sponsorships, new deals with people, new collaborations even. I don't know that he collaborates with anybody. Please keep in mind, I've only seen like short clips and years ago. That's where he is on a conscious level. Present reality, that was what he thinks that I just read out. Actual reality, you've got ring, you've got stork, you've got anchor. This is someone who does the same thing over and over again, does not change even when it's strongly suggested that he change. He is stubborn as hell. And to be fair, it feels like he's been rewarded multiple times for being stubborn, for doing 
what worked over and over for being consistent. And to a certain extent, that's true. But when it leads to stagnancy, when the ship is attached to the anchor and just kind of stays at port and doesn't change, that's eventually going to get the guests on board the ship bored, and they're going to disembark. They're going to leave for another ship that's willing to move onto other things. This is someone who doesn't change to his own detriment, to the detriment of his audience. Remember what I said about this landing on the House of the Bouquet. When he isolates from his audience, they're not going to be able to relate to him, to connect to him, and it's going to be a whole lot harder to defend him. And eventually, people are going to outgrow him, and they're going to move on. People connect to personalities that they like. And if he's isolated, then his personality isn't on display, and how are people going to more easily connect? And then people will move on. He's just going to repeat the same thing over and over. And I'm repeating myself now at this point. One more diagonal that's pointing towards the past. You've got Ryder, you've got Anchor, you've got Clouds. This is someone who moves very slowly because he chooses not to see into the future. What's in front of him is what matters. What's in the future doesn't matter as much. And to a certain degree, mindfulness is not a bad thing. But he might have more... This is someone who doesn't introspect for very long, if at all. That's what that suggests to me is that when it comes to thinking and moving quickly, aggregating information, compiling it, and saying, okay, my audience likes me because of this, he doesn't do that. He just sees the success, said, okay, that worked, let me do more of it, and then he does more of it. I'm not trying to be insulting towards anybody here, but I don't know how deeply he thinks. I think that he's very focused on the risk reward system and that he's willing to take a whole lot more risks than others might because he sees the reward in those kinds of situations. I don't know how permanent that's going to be. In fact, I don't believe that it's going to be that permanent. Okay. So my next question is what did he truly intend to do when he messaged the miner on Twitch? There's, um, Spirit is putting forth the idea that quite possibly I could be, allegedly for entertainment purposes only, that there were several minors that he was communicating with on Twitch in an inappropriate manner. It wasn't just the one. He's not being completely honest and neither is Twitch. Neither are the people who have knowledge of the situation. They aren't being honest yet. That might come forward in the future. It might not. Excuse me. It depends on the choices that people make into the future. And it depends on the people who were children back then. It depends on what they choose to say as well. The future changes always, depending on the choices that people make. Um, to answer this question, I've laid out my letter mock cards again in a seven card spread, and we're taking a look at the central theme. Literally, it doesn't get more literal than this. This is letter, this is messages. What's These are messages that were sent extremely private. He didn't want anyone to know about this. This is such an interesting spread. I'll get into why in just a second. He genuinely thought that nobody was going to find out about this. He genuinely thought that Twitch was a private platform, private enough that he could communicate with at least one minor in an inappropriate manner. Again, I don't know how deeply he thinks. I think that he just kind of, he, he's not an introspector, okay? So he doesn't think that deeply when it comes to his own behavior and how he can modify it, grow it to become a higher quality person. He doesn't think of that at all. In fact, I'm getting kind of like Manosphere kind of shit vibes with him right now. 
there's a lot going on with him when it comes to ego and pride about who he is as a person and whether he needs improvement or not. We all need improvement, regardless of who we are. As long as, as we're human, as long as we're alive on this earth, we need improvement. I don't know that he sees himself that way. Central theme, messages sent behind closed doors while I plug in my computer. On either side of that letter, you've got Fox and you've got Moon. Literally, self-satisfaction. Now, this is emotional self-satisfaction. I don't have a card that indicates sexual stuff necessarily, but that doesn't matter. It was still there. This was emotional gratification, self-gratification for him, purely emotional self-gratification for him. It was utter selfishness on a fundamental primal level. He used the miner's communications, at least one, to gratify himself, at least emotionally, if not sexually as well. Happened in the dead of night. Look at this. Two cards indicating the dead of night. This is something that he would do when he knew that all the members of his household were dead asleep and were not going to wake up. He knew that this was wrong. He knew that this was wrong. And he was so scared that this was going to come out one day. He took a real gamble. He's a gambling kind of person. If he doesn't have like an actual legitimate gambling addiction, he might be the kind of person to enjoy the high risk, high reward sensation that he gets from interactions with people. Okay. But this is someone who took a, like who understood that he was taking a real risk with this getting out to the public, with his self-centeredness getting out to the public. And it's something that has been kind of weighing around, weighing in the back of his mind. When is that going to come out? Because I wonder if he didn't low-key know, like, this has to come out sometime in the future. And right now, wouldn't you know it, in the middle of Pluto in Aquarius, where things are surfacing. Aquarius is the ruler of everything to do with computers and AI and social media, for instance. It's the great equalizer. It's Uranus. So, or has the energy, it's the ruling planet is Uranus. So this would be the perfect time as far as Pluto in Aquarius is concerned for things to suddenly surface, skeletons in the closet to come shooting out. It's time for them to be revealed. Um, this is, he's definitely using this vacation that he's just gone on as, gone on as a way to shield himself from the backlash because this has been an emotional burden for him for a very long time. He knew this was coming at some point in the future. And I feel like in some ways he just wanted the blister to burst. And at the same time, he didn't. Now, here's the thing. He didn't see how important it was when it happened. At least with the one minor, once again, Spirit indicated that there's the possibility, allegedly for entertainment purposes only, that there was more, want more than one minor that Herschel was, tech, was messaging on the Twitch platform that he thought was private. And he didn't see how really important it was. And there's the Pisces card, okay? There we go. There's the Pisces card. He didn't see back then, didn't use his intuition back then to say, maybe this could become a seed that grows into something much worse later on down the road. And guess what lands on the house of the tree? That thing which grows, which we may not necessarily want to grow. That's the burden. This was... This lands on the house of the snake. This was an incredibly valuable lie that grew in value over time because his brand continues to grow at this particular point. Now, there's the kind of hangman's noose, if you will. As long as his success grows, so does his isolation from even the people who are supposed to be closest to him in his daily life. I'm going to move on to my next question. I'm going to shuffle my cards and I'll be right back. 
My next question for the cards is, what is the most likely end of his online career going to look like? I've laid my cards out, my Lenormand cards out in another nine card spread. The central theme is ship. This is going to be, <coughs> excuse me, in the distant future, it's going to be a while longer before his career actually ends. However, when it does actually end, it's going to be a swift end to the journey. After something about a message, once again, is going to be revealed. The letter literally lands on the house of the coffin. A message which was hidden, coming out that people thought was buried, is revealed, is exhumed, and people and it's just the end. It's the end of the journey, the end of the road. He can't he won't be able to go any further after this particular message is revealed. Now keep in mind this is in the distant future, but it will end. More messages will continue to come out. More of the minors that he messaged will continue to speak. I feel like after he got caught, there's the possibility, allegedly, that he continued to continue to message the same minors off the Twitch platform. Kind of a, as a way to say I have like a last hurrah with them before he moved on to someone else. He didn't have easy access to those teenagers anymore, so he moved on to easier access elsewhere. And I'm getting Discord quite possibly. Take it as it resonates, okay? It will end. His career will end, and it will be over the messages. Now, leading up to that particular ending, I see that his self-centeredness will continue to isolate him and create a burden that he's not going to know what to do with. He's not going to know how to get away from the burden, but he's not going to know how to end his isolation either. His success will set him apart. He will be a victim of his own success, quite literally. It will strangle him. It will separate him. He won't be able to escape this. His career will end after another message or another set of messages comes out and it it'll just be over and then after that he's going to continue to have difficulties with love with compassion for others with others having compassion or any kind of love for him it'll be gone and by the way the love land the love card the heart card lands on the house of the bouquet People aren't going to like him. There will be some who do. <coughs> Excuse me. But for the most part, you'll have some diehards who will never leave him. But it's just going to be difficult for him forever to find love. He'll chase after it. He'll try to do what he can to attract it. What worked in the past, but it doesn't, it won't work in the future. The old, old trick pony can't do tricks anymore, is what I got. I see also that going into the future, he's going to be deeply self centered when it comes to the people that he's supposed to love most in his life who are supposed to have the strongest connection with him, who've been with him for years by the time his career ends. He's going, it's going to be all about him, and he won't know how to stop thinking that way. Because once again, it got him successful. It got him to where he is right now. But there will be a de decline. Everything ends, even the good stuff, especially stuff like this. Um, the burden that he will carry will be there for the rest of his life. Anchor pops up again when we look at the influences pointing towards the past that will start now. This burden is only going to continue to grow starting now. The burden is already grow growing on him and will only continue on into the future until it just makes life really 
almost impossible for him to handle. It will humble him if he allows it. It will definitely shape him into a different person. Possibly someone who is explosively bitter or silently bitter, who's passive aggressive or who's, who, who is angry, who pushes people away. Resentful, bitter, old man. Possibly. Take it as it resonates. This might not happen at all. If he makes better choices starting now, which he may not, if he makes, if he were to make better choices starting now, this would be different. I'm asking about a future situation right now. This card spread could be completely different if he were to make better choices. No more with this particular, well, I guess my eye is being spread, drawn to this one subconscious row, something that he doesn't necessarily think too much about, but which remains a burden in his basement. That's basement, so to speak, mental, spiritual basement where he throws the stuff down that he doesn't want to deal with. There's going to be a love letter that he wrote that he knows about subconsciously, but he doesn't want to talk about this because it's the nail in the coffin. Remember how the letter lands on the house of the coffin? That letter is going to be the final nail in the coffin. He's carrying it around right now. The cross is in the past, and because I'm asking in the future, this is something that he's carrying around right now. He wrote a love letter to one of the people, possibly not a minor, or, you know, Spirit is saying that it is indicating that it is allegedly a minor that he wrote a love letter to. He's not talking about this right now. It'll be revealed in the fate in the future and that'll be it. Okay. Deeply selfish individual isolating himself more and more from go the goodwill of people around him in general, online, in real life. It's just going to get worse for him. My last question, I'm going to ask my tarot cards this question and give my little mock cards a rest. Um, what might the karmic retribution for his choices to do with messaging minors include? So what's his karmic retribution um, because he messaged minors? What's that going to look like? I'll be right back, okay? I am using the Light Seer's Tarot to ask about the karmic retribution associated with these actions. Well, the first thing is the Five of Swords. At first, he's going to be the victor. Not exactly is what Spirit is saying. In some regards, yes, he's going to be the victor, but also the loser as well. This is where the downfall, the downhill climb, decline starts. How many Ds, right? He's not going to be accustomed to being the loser. This is going to be a bit of a wake-up call and a rude one at that. Once things really start to rolling. In the traditional Rider Waite Smith, the figure in the foreground is the victor, but in this particular case, it's the one who lost. It's the loser. He'll be the victor for a little while, but not for that much longer. Things like this can't last forever. I'm taking from the top, and then towards the end, I'll take from the bottom. Right now, he's affecting happiness, but make no mistake, this is turning into a real headache for him. There's stuff coming out that he really didn't want to see coming out. Like he knew on the one hand that eventually it would come out but he just oh, like like, he, like I guess he wouldn't right you want to he'd want to hide that kind of thing this is interesting because I know that he claims to be religious I think I know I know that he claims to be really I suspect I think I remember him saying that he was religious this is someone who uses religion as a mask for their behavior says, I'm perfectly happy, I've got my God, I've got my faith, and I've got all that kind of good stuff. Never mind this tremendously awful situation, which I chose to do, is giving me tremendous amounts of headaches, 
and is making me look a whole lot worse than I want to look. Again, this is not someone who does much introspection, and I don't know how much he will do into the future even. The Hierophant encourages people to study deep into the spiritual path that they're about to take because it gets difficult after the number five, right? Gets there with the, gets into cool places with the lovers, but then later as the journey progresses, you get into harder and harder stuff. It's not all fun and games and the Hierophant is there to inject some seriousness into the conversation. And I remember how I said earlier about there's some lightheartedness, some willingness to throw around some risk in order to get some rewards. He's not someone who thinks that deeply. He might genuinely consider himself to be a religious person, but he doesn't, he can't tell you about why he's religious. He doesn't think that deeply about his faith. He doesn't question it. He doesn't try to build it. He doesn't definitely doesn't study anything related to his faith. And I could be wrong, okay? Maybe he does. But again, I don't feel like he's one to dig that deep into his faith. I think that he's satisfied with the mask that it provides. And that's it. The faith is skin deep. And I was asking, what was his karmic retribution for that? Well, God's not going to bless whoever, whatever deity he worships, God's not going to bless that. The happiness will be temporary, temporary and short-lived. God isn't going to bring happiness to people who don't earn it. For a time, it will appear that they are happy. But that's not the case here. Well, there we go. I've got the Eight of Swords next. This is someone who, once again, is willfully blind, who allows the situation to keep them blinded to the real reality. This particular figure could shrug everything off, could push the birds away, and be free of the situation to see it clearly. But this is someone who does not tap into his intuition. That would take introspection. That would take admitting that who he is right now is not perfect, is flawed, in fact, and needs work in order for him to come into his best and his highest good. This is also someone who's going to see any work that he planted and try to grow. Remember, he was the anchor. This is someone who is steady, consistent, but it's also about stagnancy. If seeds are kept just in their seed form, they will die and they will not grow into something else. But also, this is about someone who has to see the, the fruits of his hard labor be uprooted in front of him and them not come into a place where he can enjoy the fruits of his labor. Literally, that love letter is going to come in going to be revealed at a really inopportune time and it's going to be rough. He's going to see some of his karmic retribution is going to involve him watching the fruits of his hard work shrivel up and die without him getting to enjoy any of it. And remember, this is a la this is landing on top of my how I've laid out these cards. This is landing on top of the sun. He's going to be affecting a happy image because of pride. There's going to be a lot of embarrassment and humiliation behind the scenes that he would die if he knew it was getting out. Okay? You've got the King of Swords in reverse. This is someone who affects an image of being wise, being full of wisdom, experience, intelligence, street smarts, knowing what to say at exactly the right time who affects that image once again, who wears that mask but is anything but, who wants to be seen as mentally mature, who wants to be seen as intelligent, a great conversation person, a great entertainer, but in fact, he's a hollow shell of himself. This is someone who actually doesn't have that skill set. He's the kind of person who faked it until he made it. And in some regards, for some people, that's all right. 
but because he was not the kind of person to reach for his best and his highest good, the God card is what this King of Swords card lands on. Because he didn't have a firm foundation in reaching towards his best and his highest self, now he watches the fruits of his hard work just kind of shrivel up and die, like I said earlier. You've got the King of Cups right after the King of Swords. This is also in reverse. I was about to say, and I may have slipped and said emotionally immature earlier, and here is the card that indicates that indeed his karmic retribution indicates that he's not going to be able to mature that much until he changes himself very permanently on a fundamental level. Starts getting real with the deity, the, an the deity that he worships or that the guides, the ancestors that he's supposed to be working with. Whatever the case may be, he's supposed to be working with a higher power to help him become a better person. And that includes becoming a more emotionally stable person, a more emotionally just mature person in, in general. I keep getting that maturity kind of angle. I feel like he's someone who struggles to take responsibility for his actions because he doesn't see himself as someone who, ta who makes big mistakes. He only sees himself as someone who makes small mistakes, like forgetting the keys when he left the house or something like that. He's not capable of introspection right now. He's not capable of introspection right now. As you can see, the King of Swords is supposed to be the best, one of the best entities in the tarot system. For being able to examine oneself and say, I fall short in this department. I meet my standards for highest good in this department. The King of Swords is supposed to be the best at that. He can't do that. Now this is interesting. The King of Pentacles is upright. So he doesn't have emotional maturity. He doesn't have mental maturity. He doesn't use his intelligence for the best purposes possible, but man, he sure is money oriented. There's some indication that in spite of what he loses, in spite of what he sees shrivel up, that there's still some money habits that he learned that he'll take into the future. I think that he's going to continue to be a stable person. He might have some earth energy, Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus, somewhere in his astrolo astrological birth chart that indicates that there is some degree of groundedness, stability, um, compassion for others like him. There's the risk that he sees in others, he that, that others go through a similar situation like he did. And instead of reaching out through, from, compa from a compassionate angle, there's the risk that he might mock them and because it makes him feel good because his insecurities are so strong. A wealthy person. I wonder if he isn't going to like deliberately try to kick up some drama in order to like secure the bag, so to speak. Like he realizes that to continue to secure his bag, he needs to be emotionally immature because that's what gets the views. Um, to be honest, a whole lot of the internet is oriented towards emotional immaturity. And if you're going to make a buck that particular way, a lot of people do and are very successful that way. And he might be one of those people. Okay. So when I say emotionally immature, he might continue to appeal to children because he knows that that is an ever flowing audience or he might try to anyway. Like I said earlier, People are not, he's going to have his diehard fans, but people are going to leave because they're just going to get turned off of him. The Eight of Cups, he's going to be forced to walk away permanently from something that he's emotionally invested in. Alternatively, he never gets to leave something, even when something has grown stale, sorry, 
Even when something had grown stale and stagnant for him, it used to have emotional appeal for him in the past, but later on in the future, he can't get away from it. This could be his persona as Dr. Disrespect. Like he wants to leave it behind and do something different, but he can't because he's so heavily associated with it. That's where his success as the King of Pentacles will come from. So he doesn't get to leave. It becomes his ball and chain, his persona as Dr. Disrespect. I'm getting the image of the Nostalgia Critic. Or, you know, not a nostalgia critic. Who's related to him is um, the angry video game nerd. And back in my day, he was the angry Nintendo nerd, right? And he had to let go of that label so that he could, like, monetize, not have to worry about copyright. But in any case, he tried to, like, get away from it. And so did Doug Walker. Both of those people tried to get away from their personas, their respective personas, but they couldn't, even though they initially put in a lot of love and hard work into it. They wanted to go and go out and do other things, but they couldn't. It became their ball and chain. Dr. Disrespect knows that his persona, Herschel, knows that his persona as Dr. Disrespect is going to bring him in a lot of cash, but he's not going to know how, excuse me, he's not going to know how to think differently in such a way that he can get away from this. He's not going to know how to reinvent himself. He's a stagnant thinker. What we saw with that anger with him repeating the same cycles over and over again, to a certain degree, yes, it got him success, but he's not going to know how to reinvent himself into the future, and that's going to be part of his karmic retributions. Spirit saying no more from the top of the deck, it's time to get into the bottom. If he's to move out of this, he's going to have to explore new ways of doing things. He's going to have to get into an real, this is like fire on air energy. He's going to have to move fast and adapt quickly in order to grow who he is as a person and not just as a brand. He's going to have to move fast. He's going to have to get ahead of the new cycle that's going to eventually bring about his downfall into the future. Remember that love letter is going to is allegedly for entertainment purposes only going to come out in the future and end things for him. If he need, he needs to make amends to the people that he's wronged, that he's stolen from. This is the 7 of swords in reverse. He needs to aggressively explore how he how he can make amends to the people that he's wronged, specifically to the minors that he took advantage of, that he used for his own personal emotional gratification. He's going to have to learn how to make amends on a private and a public level. And something major is going to have to end. And I wonder if that isn't Herschel ending his Dr. Disrespect persona and moving on to something else entirely. Possibly before that love letter comes out. Remember, there's a lot of stuff that could change between now and later. I said that his career was, his online career was going to last at least a long while longer. There could be a lot of choices made between then and now that could, could completely change what I'm discussing right here. But if he continues on down this path, this is his karmic retribution. Okay, folks, no more from me. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you would like just personal daily readings that are really quick, I upload to YouTube Shorts and TikTok and Instagram if you're on those particular platforms. Maybe there's a message in there for you, but if it doesn't resonate, leave it for somebody else with whom it may resonate. Thank you so much for watching to this point. Take care.